Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest is Elizabeth Maiwalu. She's a member of a new running club called the Dashing Whippets. Please welcome Elizabeth to the show. Thank you, Will. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you so much. It was last minute. I'm glad we can make it happen. Sure. But Elizabeth, let's start by sharing with our audience a little bit about your background. Where were you born and raised? A little bit about your family. Um, my whole family is from Italy, and they've moved to Argentina around um, when my parents were little. They didn't even know each other, but back then, everybody escaping, I guess, the you know the the, the World War. Um, so oh, so I, this is back in the 40s. Yes, yes, in the 40s. Um, so I was born and raised in Buenos Aires until I was 26 years old. Um, I studied there, you know, and had my whole life there. And then I got this job offer to move to Philadelphia, um, something around 10 years ago. So I lived there. But um, before you moved to yeah. Philadelphia, uh, what kind of schooling did you have? I um, I am a translator. So I learned, uh, I started actually learning English when I was very little because I have cousins that are from New Jersey mm -hmm. and they would speak English to each other and I just wanted to know what was going on all the time. So I started learning, I think when I was seven. Um, and then, you know, when it was, uh, you know, time to decide what to study, I figured translating books sounded like a fun idea. <laughs> from uh, Spanish to? Um, so from uh, English into Spanish. From English yeah. to Spanish. You always trans translate into your native language because that's the one you dominate the most. Mm -hmm. So I did that and then I was working there for a few publishing houses. In Philadelphia? Uh, yes, well, mo first in Argentina okay. and then I was in Philadelphia for four years. Um, and then I moved to New York around, it's gonna be six years in April or May. Mm -hmm. yes. well, was, when did you start running? Um, well, I started running um, a little bit in Philadelphia. I had a little bit of a funny episode that at the time was a little horrible, but you know that everything happens for a reason. Uh -huh. So I was, uh, it was in 2004, I was 28 years old, and I had a heart attack, just like that. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't drink, I don't smoke, you know, I've never been overweight, and my cholesterol has always been amazing. So this was mostly, I think, um, stress-related. At 28 years old? 28. Translating books from <laughs> I, English yeah, to Spanish? You know, Spanish. women, you know, we're a little, um, we oui. okay. So, um, so what happened was I, all of a sudden, you know, I, I was in the hospital for nine days. They couldn't figure out what was the reason for this. So that's why I'm saying it was stress. They couldn't figure out a reason. The doctors. Yes. They, but, but they know it was, it was heart attack. Oh yeah, yes, yes. It took them, you know, a little, uh, uh, you know, just a little bit to figure out. You know, as soon as I got in, in an hour or two, they knew like my heart was fried. Um, it, it was the case of, you know, the, the, every, the, everybody in the hospital was talking about it. I used to work in that same hospital, so I knew everybody. And it was a little rough being, you know, in a different country, in a different language, away from your family and everybody and mm -hmm. having to go through this. And they did all kinds of tests. They couldn't find, you know, the reason. So um, what happened is they wanted to do surgery. They wanted to put me on a lot of pills. And, you know, nine days later, I'm walking home, and all of a sudden, I am a heart patient. And that was a little bit hard for me to digest at 28, mm -hmm. um, having had, you know, no warning about this. So that's when I decided that if I could run, <laughs> you know, the doctors would leave me alone, and they would let me be. The thing is, I had never really done sports before. I never run before. Um, so I just started running a little bit. Basically, I would do one or two miles two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and I still, you know, I still got my checkups with all the cardiologists. I had a whole team trying to figure out what was happening. So you were a, a bookcase. <laughs> I was. Were, a text case, I Yes, say. everybody would hear from me in the cafeteria. They were talking about, you know. Um, so it was, you know, it, it was a little bit of a... You know, it opens your eyes to really? how. Let me ask this: Was there a family history? They looked at that. Yeah, my dad has an enlarged heart, but he had never. And he, I mean, he has been smoking for. He smoked for like forty years, so we always, you know, thought it was the smoking. But uh, you be secondhand smoke situation. I, I guess, yeah. yeah. You know, the twenty-five years that I was, you know, at home. Mm -hmm. um, so it was. I, I think. I do think that everything happens for a reason, and okay. I think that definitely opened my eyes uh -huh. about the lifestyle that I had. Okay. Though, even though, you know, I was never like, 
into anything wild. But I thought it was time for me to take control of what was happening with all of this, mm -hmm. you know. And when I moved to New York a year later, um, I actually was forced by a friend to sign up for the New York City Half Marathon. And once I, yeah, just because that's the way. were forced, yeah, okay. I was forced. I actually was forced. Okay. And I had done only six miles until then. Mm -hmm. So it was a little rough to jump to a half marathon. And being able to finish it was so amazing. I, I, I cried the last two miles. Now, what year was that? That was in 2006. And that was the New York City half? <clears throat> yes. Oh, the excellent. first The first year they did the New York City half. Oh, excellent. It that was, was a tough one to get in. Yes. To, well, back had, then it wasn't because nobody... It was first come, first yeah. serve. <laughs> yeah, and it was like the first time they did it. Nobody knew about it. And I was really lucky that that was the one that I started with. And just finishing that race, I, I never, I guess I had never finished a race before, so I never thought I could. So knowing what my body, my body was now handling, you know, made me feel a lot better. And, you know, I, I would still go to the cardiologist. They would tell of me, course. you know, you can't be running like this. A little bit really? of exercise. Well, they tell you exercise is good. But when you go to car your cardiologist and you just did, you know, a, the 18-mile tune-up the last Sunday and you're doing a half marathon on Saturday and you're doing 30 miles in between, it is a little bit too much. And when I decided I, you know, after a couple of, after the, the New York City half, I set my eyes on the marathon, of course. And, you know, I, I decided 2008 was going to be the year I did it. And um, I started training for it. And Were you uh, with a running club at this point? No, no. I just, I was always running by myself, <clears throat> which is something that I really like, you know, to have the time to think and all of that. Um, I just joined the team last year. But I would have um, a partner for the long runs and run by myself during the week, mm -hmm. which is, I think, something that works for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely no doctor was happy with me running the marathon. They told me that it's suicidal. You are going to die. And, you know, like in the movies, I cry in my way home. What am I going to do? I have to make my will. It was a little tragic for me because I it was 30 days before the marathon. I have been thinking about this for three years. Wow. Yeah. So I did the marathon. I was fine. You, you know. ignored your doctors. And <laughs> I kept going. And then, you know, I told my doctor, I'm going to do Boston and I'm going to do New York again and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, two years after my first marathon, I think that's when he said, Elizabeth, you know, I'm really impressed. Your heart is almost back to normal, which never, no, no one recovers the muscle so fast. It's hard to basically, you know, make the muscle go back to normal mm -hmm. like that. And he said, you did it super fast. You must be doing something right. He didn't say it's the running. Okay. But last year, I saw him actually, I think it was right after Boston, and he said, it's got to be the running. He actually admitting that all of this exercise was making me healthier and was helping me move forward. And you definitely have a completely different outlook on life if you decide to take the bull, the bull by the horns instead of just sitting at home and taking pills and mm -hmm. thinking that you shouldn't because mm -hmm. you could die. Did you change anything else, the diet? My diet my diet is a little bit of chaos. Um, I, I do try to eat healthy. I do eat a lot of grains, you know, bulgur and buckwheat and things like that. And I try to eat healthy, but I really... It's a 50-50. I love donuts, and I can't help it, and I just think life is too short. <laughs> okay, so you don't follow a special diet. I don't. You, I you don't. eat what you want to eat, but... I do know what works for me, so maybe before a race, I watch my intake for a few days, and then I cover load, and then after the race, I do whatever. So, you know, I go through these ups and downs of junk and good food. I, I definitely something that I really need to focus on. I really want to eat healthier, uh -huh. but... You know. Well, there's lots of help on that. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. you can't. But it, that's interesting. Yeah. As your weight changed over the years? It does. It changes a lot because I basically I'm not really worrying too about it. Um, after a marathon, I can go down 20 pounds in a couple of days. You go up? Down. down. I lose weight. I, I, it's after a marathon? Yeah, because I guess my metabolism gets so wrapped up that I get hyper and I just eat and it just goes right through me. Um, Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, not typical. <laughs> well, I guess, but the problem is when I get injured, and not only I'm miserable and I want to anxiety eat, but also I'm not exercising, so that's the downsides of this. Well, that's why, 
yeah. a lot of coaches say, and doctors, yeah. the two go in hand in hand. Because yes. if you have a good diet along with the exercise, you don't gain, don't have that jojo yes. effect with the weight yeah. if you're following a, a good diet. Because now you're relying on the exercise yes. to, to maintain your weight. <laughs> it's working for now. I mean, I know it's something I have to work on, but I haven't had the... Well, you know, you're, gun you're, to my you're head. You're very, yeah. very young, so it's a work in progress. Not that young. I should know better. But. Well, that, it's, <laughs> I, I listen. You yeah. overcome yeah. so much that you're very inspirational. I deserved my donuts, don't you, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you. I do. earned them. <laughs> I think you do. Yeah. But what I'm saying is yeah. a work in progress, and mm -hmm. it takes yes. time to find new balances in your yes. life. Yes, balance is definitely my biggest problem. Okay, but tell us. Um, I'm very intrigued by this running club called the Dashing. Whippets. Yes. Um, when and how and what's it all about? The Whippets, um, they started, um, it's going to be two years ago, in May 2009, um, out of these two friends, uh, Matthew and Rich, who worked together and they started running. And oh, they sorry, Matthew and Rich? Rich, yeah. And they just wanted to, I guess, have more friends around to train with. And I've never... I've never been a competitive person. I am. I don't. I don't care what other people do. I don't want to go faster. I don't care. But what I like about this team is that they are very social. So anytime you want to do a run, there's always that's going out for a run. They go to races together. There's brunch after the race. There's definitely a re a, an insane amount of very talented people. Um, we did really well last year in the New York Runners points with the mm -hmm. team clubs. Um, the so women. This is, this is 2008, started yes. by two. Two, 2009. 2009, yeah. started by two guys. Yeah. I know you guys use a meetup. That's how you, yes. you, that's, you find each other. Yeah, that's one of the main things about the team is that we're all very connected. And the meetup website, which is at dashingwhippets.org, mm -hmm. you go there and you see what run is today, tomorrow, what, how many runs. There's around three organized um, runs every week and three over the weekend. So you have runs in Prospect Park, in Central Park, in Queens. So That is amazing you did that so quickly I, I, because yes. I'm very familiar with other running clubs. Yeah. And, and it usually is a struggle. Yes. No, it's, it, I think that's really amazing because you know who's going to be there, who is your pace because everybody has a little profile. Okay. So you know who you can run with within the team, what time they're meeting, what they're doing after, what the course is going to be. And you can go and look at the previous one and see how people, ha you know, what they did. And there's always tons of pictures. So it's it's insanely well organized, and if and then we have these message boards where everybody's talking about I found this discount for this running store, and I'm thinking about doing this race. Who's coming? So that is so fabulous. I totally agree with you. I was blown away when I saw the pictures. Said so Mr. Chung. Oh yes, yes. Uh, he's amazing. Yes. And he has a quality camera, yes. and he always sits himself at the right spot, yes. and he captures you guys and so it's, beautifully. And it's just amazing to have this support. Like for example, uh, last weekend the Manhattan Half was five degrees with the wind chill, and we had people coming to cheer. Not just we had. There were like fifty whippets running. We, there were a lot of us running. So you, I, I ended up pacing with people, but you had them out there cheering on you, which is just amazing. When it's just such a miserable day. Uh, Yes, and they yes. would go, I think, um, last year when I had one of the Whippets doing um, the Philadelphia half, some people went to Philadelphia to cheer. To cheer. That's it's, the camaraderie is yeah. just amazing. Well, you know, I should be fair, a lot of clubs do very similar things. But, but to me, not to the yeah. extent that you guys yeah. do it, you know. Yes. And you started, you said, in 2009. Yes. Now, how many members do you have so far? There's around 400, but it keeps growing. I, like I know. <laughs> how, how do you spread the word? Well, I think it's because we are such a fun bunch, you know. And, I mean, there's definitely a lot of very talented people that are very competitive. You know, the women are now in the A division this year because they did so well. I said oh, that's they. great. Are you <laughs> part of the women's division? Uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, yes. the, uh, the elite division or whatever Well, no, I think they usually just take the five pe the five women who classify. I used to rank in the top five last year, but now that we're, there's a lot more women, I don't think I will anymore. Okay, I'm, okay. Um, but I, I, I like the team because because of that, because there's always someone to run with and there's really quality people. Um, you know, when they come out to cheer for you and take pictures, so you don't have to pay, you know, a lot of money for the professional ones. You um, have your own personal bright room. It's amazing. I, I mean, you have your own uh, outfit. Who designed, who came oh, up the with the name? Rich all, and... Uh, yeah, I th I'm not sure what's the story behind that, the but, dashing you know, whippets. The whip, a whippet is a little greyhound, so we're supposed to be, like, super you're light you're and built, fast. Built for speed. <laughs> but I, I, I 
I, I really want to spend some t more time on this because mm -hmm. I'm very interested in running clubs and how they get started. I'm a member of a few, mm -hmm. uh, like Nike, yeah. Run for New York, the Galloway Running Group, uh -huh. um, and a few others that uh, that the stores run, like Urban Athletics, okay. uh, the running company. Every running store has mm -hmm. has, yes. has uh, teams. So that literally dozens of running clubs that you could join. Yes. Uh, but here's this uh, Dashing Whippets founded by two fellows that are very mm -hmm. sociable. Yeah. And, and part of the attraction, you say, is you want to be around these people because they're fun. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about uh, what is the training philosophy? So, for example, you show up, is there stretching, is there... Uh, there is. We do a little bit of, um, we do have training programs. Uh, so right now we have um, one going on. Uh, a lot of people are going to the the one in D.C., the marathon and the half in D.C., and there's people training for Boston. So we basically, um, we have a coach that says, you know, if you're training for a 10K, we have, you know, also we target the the, the races, the New York Runners um, races with points. So we have the 10K plan, and so he decide, you know, people when they show up, they know what they're training for, so he tells us, okay, let's do this, you do these hills, and there's people that are like doing sprints on the track, while we do, you know, mile repeats. We do have um, a speed work on Thursdays. That Where we, do you do your speed work? We, we go to the track on 6th Street and on the east side. The lower east side, yeah. Yeah, so we go there on Thursdays at 7 That's p.m. a beautiful track. It's amazing. It's right, right off the... Well, uh, now it's full of snow. The East River. Yes, it's a gorgeous view. And, you know, you have the little wind in the summer. It's it's just amazing. So we have um, different workouts every Thursday. So sometimes it's the mile, sometimes it's 800 repeat, sometimes we do a ladder. Now, uh, where do you meet? Because what a part of the, the challenge yeah. is the clothing, especially yes. in winter. You've got to bundle up. Yeah, and no, then we leave the stuff in there. You at, know, the, we leave, at, the, yeah. at the club? We leave it. No, we leave it, yeah, at the track. At the track, I'm sorry, yeah. because they have the stadium yes. steps. I guess somebody yeah. watches. I mean, we're right there, and no, you know, nothing has ever happened in the time that we've been there. Mm -hmm. um, so we basically are being timed, and we all go, and there's maybe we're all doing, let's say, it's the second Thursday of the month, so we're all doing mile repeats. So the people that are doing shorter distances, maybe training for a 5K, are doing, you know, 100 meters. We do drills before, you know, we do high jumps and stuff, and then we do a little bit of strengthening and stretching after. Mm -hmm. We always have somebody in the team that, you know, knows how to do those, one of the team captains uh -huh. um, leads it. So that's fun to do. Uh, that is that is so wonderful yes. to hear. And the good thing I think is that anyone can come. You know what I mean? A anyone at any pace, they're just starting, they don't know what they're doing. And I think it's really great motivation to have people to run with because even at the track, if I had to do mile repeats by myself, I would like do, you know, a lap and go home. That's right. That's or like right. go at super slow speed, that's right. <laughs> you know, because you don't have anybody to chase, anyone's timing you, no one's watching you. So that's when right. you have, you know, if you're Red Born to run, you know we are good runners because of the pack. And we do need the pack. Well, I want to talk about that some yeah. more, about the pack. Yeah. So how can people find the Dashing Whippets? Dashingwhippets.org. Dot org. Yeah. Uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful success story. Story and and I think you beat the odds because, <laughs> like I said, there's so many other clubs that you could have gone to. Yes. The Dashing Whippets yeah. sounds like uh, a great organization. It and, is. And I hope the people are just. I mean, uh, think the people are what make it so did, amazing. You're absolutely right. But oh, you mentioned how do you become a captain? You said you mentioned uh, there's uh, people that because two people can't do everything. No. No, no. So, no. How, what's the hierarchy like? Um, I think um, there's pacers, there's captains. I'm not sure how you climb the okay. ladder in there, uh, but I think you know people that definitely want to help. Um, it's it's out there if okay. you want to put in the time. It definitely takes some time because yep, you have yep. to make sure you're there to organize the runs. Yeah. Whenever there's a run, there's always a right. host. And and of course you're paid very very well for to do this. Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. No, this is. This, <laughs> <laughs> Racing folks is purely voluntary. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, what, I know. It's amazing what you do for nothing. Yes. I mean, some of, some of the things that we do, you couldn't pay anybody to do. It's, no. just, it's just for the love of the game and the love of the people there. And, and I see, I mean, definitely the, the people organizing the team, are the, the time they spend there, I'm like, where do they find the time? And then you hear their, their wife saying, he doesn't do anything else, you know. <laughs> well, let's cover, uh, you said, Born to Run, wonderful blog, oh, Runner's yeah. World. Yeah. Um, and you did a story about meeting the Born to Run 
Um, either, either one of the athletes or the author. Tell yeah, us about I that. Met, I met um, Scott Jurek last year, who is amazing, and Cabacho Blanco. Um, who's, uh, Camacho Blanco is yeah. one of the runners? Yeah, he's like the main person that you would find there, who's the one who organizes the race. The born to run races. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now, some of our audience would not be familiar. So the yeah. born to run races, is that in, done in Mexico? Where is yes. It? You have to, I mean, it's complicated to get there. You have to go to El Paso and then take a bus or something complicated because I was planning to do, uh, it's an ultra marathon. Mm -hmm. um, you can do either like the half of it or the whole ultra. Um, and it's in the middle of nowhere in Mexico with the Tarahumara Indians who are the most talented runners there are because that's all they do and they have an amazing diet. All goes back to that. And they um, run uh, essentially barefoot or with sand. Yes, yes. And that's something that I got into too because of that book, which, you know. Bored to run. Yes, which is all what a lot of people did, running with the five fingers or. The five fingers, yeah. that's the vibrant yes. five fingers. Yes, it's that like a little like, sock. It looks like gloves. Yes, exactly. exactly. But there are other shoes uh, that, yes. that, are, that, are, that look very attractive. I mean, some people don't like to look at the five fingers. No, no. I kind of like the attention, so that's fine with me. Oh, you like the attention? <laughs> Why not? Okay. They look yes. at you going, what, what is that? <laughs> well, yeah. Mostly when you feel walking around in a different city. Um, I think that book is it, it's amazing. Um, that, you know, mostly because he has a lot of science behind it and everything that he teaches, it's that, you know, men actually survived because they were hunting pack and, you know, they, they pack and they run together. That's the way they were able to kill their prey because they would spot it and they would chase it down until the thing could not run anymore. And that's what we're good at. We're good at sweating for a long time. That's our main thing as humans. Um, so I, I definitely it hit home when I read that because it's all about, you know, leaving a lot of the stuff behind and starting running from scratch and, you know, basically running naked with no pressure, with no shoes, to just, you know, follow your heart, your pace, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's something that really, I really enjoy. I, you mm -hmm. know, running on the trails, I definitely like a lot more than running on the pavement. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's sort of another thing that I think I like. I mean, I, I've been spending a lot more time on focusing on on the trails instead on the trails. of just going is, for speed. Uh, which is uh, Van Cortlandt Park is famous for that. Yes, yes, and they're and in fact now they have races uh, on the holidays. It's yes, the Thanksgiving There's run, the Christmas up, run, the Valentine's run. But this is done by a different group. Yeah, I think so. Right. It, it is. It's very interesting yeah. that every year that. Uh, that it, new ideas develop and new ways of mm -hmm. uh, expressing yourself through running yes. comes up, like the holiday runs. And I think, I mean, and I think the holiday, the the, the marathon. I, I think it's a great idea in the same sense because they don't have baggage. They you don't pay for anything. It's just a lot of people that want to run in the trails. That's right. That's right. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, you recently did something very interesting. It's a, a, a vertical run. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Tower running. Um, that was this past Tuesday, four days ago, so I'm still recovering mentally from it. It's a very, very exciting experience because... But tell us the audience what it is. Yeah, so you basically you climb up the 86 floors. Oh, this is the Empire the State Empire Building State. run up. Yes, yes. So you climb the 86 floors, which is, I think, 1,576 steps. I don't I think know. A lot of steps. That's what they say. Um, and it's, it's hard to get in because it's a very small group. You can't fit that many people in that narrow staircase. So when I was picked, I was, you know, very excited and freaked out at the same time. Was this by lottery? How many? Yeah, you just sign up and you, you know, you tell them a little bit about yourself and they just randomly pick people. Okay. Um, so this was my third time trying and I got in. Oh, excellent. Yes. Congratulations. Is, thank you. They don't tell you a lot of time in advance. They only tell you like two weeks and a half before. So you don't really have that much time to train and then taper a little bit. So what kind of training do you do for well, running uh, 86 I, flights of uh, uh, what I did, stairway? <laughs> what I did, well, crazy stuff. Uh, you know, I thought about going to the subway um, es escalator and just run up the down escalator. But what I did is basically I run up and down the stairs in my building with ankle weights um, for two weeks and a half, um, which is, is a lot, it's, it's a lot different. And I didn't plan on it because when you have ankle weights, you it's easier to take two steps at a time. But when you don't, it, it's a completely different game. So getting there was... It, but did you have, uh, did you read any books about it or was there any specialized training? No, no, I went to the gym and they worked really, on, you know, really. my legs. Well, I, uh, that's something I do not want to do, the Empire State <laughs> Building Runner. Okay. But I do know, 
a friend of mine that does it, he said the secret is using your arms. Yes. To pull yourself. Definitely. Well, I fractured this arm and I tore the rotator cuff um, three months ago, so it's a little limpish. I mean, I can move it now, but there's no way I could pull oh, my no, weight no, up. No, no. So I, th that was out of the equation for me. Okay. Um, I was using this one just so I wouldn't like fall again. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, um, but definitely that's what I saw uh, the men doing, the, the leaders, because they release the women and then the men come they are released five minutes after. Oh, interesting. So the women go first. The women go first, um, and then the men then the catch men, up then, with us. And then the men pass you by. Yes. And, the, and the they're not very nice about it, either. They're not. At least not the ones who are, you know. You the know. serious ones, yeah. I actually almost fell back because the guy who would end up winning, Thomas Dahl, who won, I think, the last six years. Yes, I read that, uh, six years. Pulled me down a little bit. Like, I wasn't even there. And But, I'm, you know, it's all fair game. It's a race. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, but no, it was no interesting to see. Yeah, it was interesting to see what they were doing. You know, like, some of them were doing just one step at a time. Some of them were two. Um, or they would run to the, through the landing or just walk. It was, everybody was doing different things, so. Different thing. And you enjoyed <laughs> yourself your first time. Yeah. Yes. This is something you want to do again? I would love to. I would love to. <laughs> what are some of the, almost out of time, what are some of the quick future challenges that you have for yourself? Um, challenges. I definitely um, want to get into the ultra marathoning in, in the trails, definitely. That's something that I would love to do. But mostly I think I want to run injury free. I think it's my, my, my main goal, so get a little better at, you know, cross-training and, you know, knowing what I can do and what I shouldn't do. I think that's one of the most important things. Well, look into something called chi running. Oh, yes, I've been chi running, yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I've been doing that, too. Excellent. Yes. Well, I think you do a little bit of everything. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for dropping by and thank you. talking to us. And I wish you all the success with the dashing whippets Thanks. <laughs> and continual growth and uh, an opportunity for yourself. Thank you so much for inviting me. Folks, this is Will Sanchez with Gotta Run. I will see you on your side of the road.